I'm here to briefly review uh, some electrical safety issues concerning uh, flood recovery issues and, and electricity around water. And I'm also going to briefly discuss the role of our Uh, roller gas and electrical inspections people will be playing in your recovery efforts here. On the next slide, please. Our cast of characters that we have here include Cliff Kenny, uh, he's the uh, electrical inspector supervisor, Don King, the super uh, inspector for this area, George Rutledge, he's the gas inspector, Mike Graves, you guys, most people know him here, John Omi with the SAS Power Safety Department, and myself. There's uh, electrical safety issues we're going to discuss briefly, include general electrical safety indoors, electrical safety around the SAS power equipment, and electrical safety concerning portable generators. And then we're going to also discuss uh, gas furnaces. In general, water and electricity are a bad combination. Water is a relatively good conductor of electricity, and it And if you happen to be in the water when uh, you're in contact with uh, energized equipment, you'll receive a shock, possibly electrocution. Household electricity is generally 120, 240 volts. And if there's flooding in your area, your water on there, SAS power will pull your meter and disconnect your service. It may not be safe to you to operate the breakers in your panel at all, especially if there's water around that, so the best thing to do is pull the meter. Never disconnect or unplug anything if you're standing or in the water. And another thing, keep the kids away from there. After you're in the recovery efforts, if you're in doubt about anything, call an electrician. Do not use any appliance or electrical device that's been submerged until it's been thoroughly dried out. If the power is off, you can actually take your plug and switch covers off, let them dry out, they'll speed up the dry out process. Appliances and electrical device should be inspected. And anything with electric motors, refrigerators, freezers, furnaces, uh, washers and dryers should all be thoroughly inspected. If your electrical water a panel became in contact with the water, call an electrician, let him check it out. Use a flashlight for, for lighting down in your dark areas. Your, your basement lights probably won't work. And use a ground fault protected plug for any work like the wet dry vacs and things like that. And you can actually get, if you don't have them available, you can actually buy extension cords with ground fault plugs built into them. Water damage. And this is part of a directive that the SAS power uh, electrical inspectors will be looking for. All service feeders and equipment that were submerged must be inspected and tested. What the tests they do, they actually apply a test voltage to verify the insulation quality. All devices providing electrical protection, that's your circuit breakers, ground fault breakers, and ground fault receptacles, have to be replaced. All electrical equipment showing signs of corrosion should be replaced also. Any of the circuits that were submerged in water should have the insulation test, but what they call some mega test, they apply a test voltage in it to ensure that the uh, cable is, is uh, up to stuff. Pay special attention to electric motors and all the meter sockets and things that were moved or damaged during the water have to be securely mounted. If SAS power does remove the meter, it must go, must go through an electrical inspection before the service can be re-energized. Basically, they'll be in verifying the integrity of your cable installation, examining electrical equipment for damage and corrosion, replace or repair as required, and replace any breakers or GFCI, GFCI outlets that were submerged. There's a directive that I will send to the town office. I won't go through it now. If you see any of the SAS power equipment out there, I'll just sum it up. Call SAS power. Overhead stuff, if you just need lines down, Call, call the office, that's the contact number right there. Same with any underground distribution. If you hear any noises or any snapping coming out of that, call that number. 
Now we're on to furnace safety. Uh, the National Gas and Propane Installation Code requires that all gas appliances and equipment that have been exposed to fire, explosion, flood, or any other damage must be inspected by an acceptable authority before returning to service. A licensed gas fitter is considered an acceptable authority. Engine. Any of the gas equipment that has been submerged, gas valves, furnace more stuff, will have to be replaced. There's also an attachment I'll be sending to the office tomorrow. Portable generators. Uh, while your power's out, some people may be running generators. There are several uh, safety issues concerning them. Uh, there's electrical shock and poor electrocution. Accidental energization of other systems. Gasoline and, of course, carbon monoxide. Electrical sh shock will discuss first. Uh, operate your generator in dry locations. Do not disconnect equipment while you're standing in the water. If you have to, even build a hoarding over top of the generator to ensure it's kept dry. Small generators are not usually pro properly grounded. And in your household systems, your uh, ground serves a major part of your protection. So that's another thing you have to be very careful of. Use adequate later, adequately rated three-prong plugs. And by what I mean adequately rated, don't try and run a motor or motor load on a number 16 extension cord. You should probably look for a 14 gauge or 12 gauge cord for running uh, larger loads. And use a GFCI when you're in damp locations. Accidental energization of equipment. Some people are tempted to take their generator output and backfeed it into their house system. Nice quick way of getting your computer working and maybe getting the television going or something. But not a, unless you have a properly installed system, done the code, and it's, it's, it's not a good idea. It, it, you maybe feed back feed the SAS power system, and if they're using proper work methods and stuff, you know, it's, it's not that, you know, it's not good, but it's not that, but it's also it's going to burn out your generator. Gasoline, ensure gasoline stored in proper containers. Do not store the fuel indoors. No smoking, of course. Avoid spillage. Use a funnel when you're, when you're refilling. And do not refill while you're running or while the generator is still hot. And also wear hearing protection if you're going to be working in the vicinity of the, the running generator. Carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide, known as CO, is colorless, odorless, toxic gas. It's a product of incomplete combustion, and it kills many people every year. Do not operate portable generators indoors. Do not operate them outdoors if there's a possibility of open windows or doors that can allow the carbon monoxide into the building. If you show any signs of CO poisoning, which include dizziness, headache, tiredness, or nausea, get fresh air immediately and seek medical attention. <laughs>